up beautifuls this is Avrami here and welcome to zodiac axis axes i don't know how to read apparently <laughs> but we are here we're playing a new demo and i've actually been really excited to play this one ever since i saw on tumblr um i follow a couple of visual novel creators and one of them happened to be this game and i've been really excited and um anticipating recording this demo I didn't record a day of it was released because I had a lot of visual novels backlogged, but now we can actually start on this one, so I'm really excited. Move your mouse over the fan to display the quick menus. Honestly, one of the reasons why I wanted to play this game really bad is because the art was beautiful, so you know, your girl had to play it. As you play, icons may appear in the bottom left corner to show different effects. You gain affection from a character. You trigger some kind of flag for better or for worse. You're currently facing the consequence of a previous choice. Well, you guys know I suck at visual novel games. So, yeah. You can change these hotkeys under advanced settings. Hit space. It's kind of interesting. I never usually hit space in a game. Oh, look at the art. It's so pretty. Being ordinary is dangerous. That was the first thing I heard in the journalism major. The class was taught by Mr. Finch, a tall man with high cheekbones and a skull that rounded into a pointed beak nose like just like his namesake. He took- he, he look- I was- he was- so he looks. He took all of us 80-something journalism majors and 100 general education students by surprise. In our experience, ordinary people were never dangerous. It was always the outliers, the extremists, the ones who made headlines wherever they walked. But then he continued, being ordinary is dangerous to yourself. Don't be ordinary. Be ordinary and you will die. Oh, that's great. And he proceeded to barrel through a long list of journalists who had died in action. It was the grimmest class we'd, we've ever, we, uh, we'd ever had. Particularly grim for an, for an entry level writing for journalism. Here's how you don't die, Mr. French said. Before you do anything, think. Review. Compile all the major events of your existence into a timeline that you can later critique for literary analysis. Ask yourself this thing I'm about to do. Is it something that the average person would do? If the answer is yes, then don't do it. Because humanity is, on average, utterly moronic. He drilled it into us until it replayed insistently in our minds like a broken record. Don't be ordinary. Don't be ordinary. Don't be ordinary. Surpass the ordinary. Replace the ordinary. Be extraordinary. Think. Review. Compile all the major events of your existence into a timeline that you can later critique for liter liter literary analysis. That was Mr. Finch's mantra. <sighs> oh god, this art. It's beautiful. And somewhere along the way, it also became mine. Okay, cool. Look at the beautifulness! Hi. And- Oh, hi. There is art. <laughs> there is voice acting. Look, she's so pretty. Heart, you really sure about this? The crowd out there is dangerous. You might get shot. Don't worry. I'll make sure to stick the landing. <sighs> Can't believe you have the guts to choke at a time like this. Sorry, it's a bad habit I picked up along the way. <laughs> How are we doing on time? It's been ten minutes. I think we have to go without him. Well... Probably changed his mind and ditched. I can't wait any longer. Or around any longer. Are you ready? No. <laughs> In kinder circumstances, I probably would have never met this woman. Unfortunately, these aren't kinder circumstances, and I've met this woman. I straighten and look her in the eye with confidence. Fake confidence. Alright, let's go. Um, don't know your name. And he has a lover be. Where are we going? That's a creepy door sound. And this is where I think, review, and compile all the major events of my life into a timeline that I can later critique for literary analysis. Some say it's akin to watching your life flash before your eyes. Sir Finch would have flunked their papers for using stale platitudes. Oh, look, it's so pretty! If I were a good novelist, I would start at the beginning of the story. Exposition, setup, irony, and you would know exactly why who was doing what. But I'm not a good novelist, so I won't. I'm a journalist, and journalism always start right in the middle. We explain as we go along, as the need calls. 
So, I won't start this store from when I was born, or when I graduated college. Even when I sent out 32 job applications within two months and had all of them rejected, I start from the middle. My 33rd job application, and the one time where I was accepted. Wow. Even the transition is beautiful. I cannot. This game is so beautiful. This is my color scheme right there. Pinkness. Oh, look at the vase. That's pretty. Oh, even the ringtone is so cute. A phone call from an unknown number. Hello? Welcome to me. Innocent, lovely little me. Worried about nothing but finding a job as an untalented, fresh out of college journalism graduate. I had a long series of very grand accomplishments, including but not limited to 32 job applications in two months, 10 interviews, none of which resulted in offers, a lot of polite rejection emails that didn't feel very polite upon re receipt. My worries were very normal, almost mundane, but at the time they seemed insurmountable. Insur 1. Student loans. 2. Housing costs. 3. How to not bum around as an unemployed loser. And what was not included on my list of worries? Masterminds? Ex execution ceremonies? How to get out of, of a barricaded house while on fire? Basically, life was much calmer at this point. Much kinder. I liked calm. I liked kind. Unfortunately, they didn't seem to like me. <sighs> Is this the woman who goes by the name of Allison Hart? Is this the person using a voice changer? Yes, that's me. Indeed. Very good. Very good indeed. On this day, one week prior, you applied for a Supernature, did you not? That's correct. Supernature, huh? Supernature was a famous, well, 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 infamous, really, online tabloid that specialized in the supernatural. It was a necessity for any self-respecting tinfoil hat conspiracist. Supernature considered everything to be supernatural. Everything. From politics to health to the stock market to petty crimes, Supernature's writers were convinced that another realm had a hand in the matter. Pixies, leprechauns, invisible dragons, they existed all around us, manipulating prices, changing the weather, decorating the city in graffiti. Honestly, it was an, an absurd website. But somehow Supernature was extremely successful. Their views, comment counts, and advertising premiums were something to behold. Maybe it's because the netizens were bored, or maybe Supernature had cracked the code to viral content. Either way, they had a job listing, and I didn't have a job. We were a match made in heaven. Judging from the quality of their writing, my skills are up to par, but we'll see what they're looking for. If I get accepted, at least I might get some experience in the media field. Otherwise, I might have to start looking for an entry level in any industry. Well, Miss Hart, I am the founder of Supernature. Oh! Oh! Is that big or normal? How extensive is Supernature's staff? Yes, I am pleased to inform you that your application has passed preliminary inspection. Are you available at the moment? We may start our interview at once. Fire! Or fire away, sir! Very good. Firstly, what is your opinion regarding baby wallabies? What? God, can I save? Yeah, that's that's yes. I had a file because I I would for some reason the the sound wasn't playing in my game, but I fixed it. Um, I don't think saying what. Let's uh, let's go with what. I don't I don't know if that's good or not. <laughs> let's let's reload that. Reload. Yes. Uh, they they make for good barbecue. Uh, I don't think it. I don't know. They're my spirit animal. Okay, so each one it seems it seems like it doesn't matter. It, it's gonna lead up to an event. So I'm just gonna say what. Well, it's interesting. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> uh, I guess this. Did he take me seriously? Okay, each one, each one is. Um, each one he's like, mmm, about. Yep. 
she said they're really cute. Okay. Well, it's interesting. The next query is thus. Are you calm under pressure? Well, at least this is a normal question. Such as during a crisis. Or making a split second decision. Such as while being shot at. Or while being held hostage. Oh, I grew up, I go through that all the time. Who would be calm under that kind of pressure? Uh, let's say this here. I don't know if this- I mean, this is a demo, so it's not gonna do anything, so... Soldiers? Don't soldiers get PTSD for a reason? Only the weak ones. You're crazy. Uh, oops. I probably shouldn't have said that to a potential boss. <laughs> so your answer is that you would not be calm. Well, I mean, at least he doesn't seem offended. But how can I answer this question? I haven't focused that kind of crisis yet, so I won't know until I land in it. I see. Then my last question. Wait, already? There's only been two questions. All right. When faced with an instance that is bizarre, something beyond your comprehension, what is your first hypothesis? A first what? Let us say that you see something superhuman, or witness an object falling over, even while no one is around to push it. What would your first reaction be? I'd be unnerved, but curious. Perhaps I ought to rephrase. Would you strive to only find a naturalistic explanation? Would you eliminate any possibility of a supernatural cause? <laughs> when in doubt, leprechauns. Always leprechauns. I don't know, honestly, I would... Um... I'll go with what's most logical. But if there's no one really there, you can't really say I'll go with what's logical. Like, hmm. I joke around a lot when it comes to like issues like this. Leprechauns. They have tons of gold. I like gold. Hmm, logical enough. Real? Sorry, while you lack the polish of a professional, I sense a great deal of potential in you. I believe that in this situation, employment could be rather adventurous. Ad adventurous. Advantage? Advantage? A frack work. Dude, I can't read today. For the both of us. Sorry, sir. I lack polish. You're rather ordinary, Miss Hart. Relatable to the point of blandness. There's absolutely nothing noteworthy about you that sets you apart from the common man. Save for your grammatical expertise. Be crazy, Miss Hart. Be brave. Be mean. I will be sending over a contract shortly. Read over it carefully and inform me if you require any elaboration. A contract, sir. I'm saying that you have the job, should you want it. I'm currently sending a contract to the email address listed on your resume. I have the job? What, those three questions? I am, um, thanks? I hope you approve to be more eloquent in interviewing ghosts. Farewell, Miss Hart. Oh, right, ghosts, supernatural online tabloid. Uh-huh. Okay. The unusual voice on the other end of the phone would become very important eventually. In fact, maybe one day it will become my only lifeline in a time of utter chaos. He sounds beautiful, so... <laughs> August 20th? Still? 21st. Okay. <sighs> oh, the phone ringing again. Oh, looks like this is the same number. Time to investigate the world of ghosts, goblins, and ghouls. Hello, boss? Hello, Miss Hart. The name is Pathfinder. So the voice is Disguiser. I guess that this will be a regular thing. Alright, Pathfinder. I trust that you are now thoroughly knowledgeable in the history of our most honorable establishment. Uh, um... You mean to tell me you that you have been idle? No! No, of course not, sir. He's totally not. But looking up insights on social media isn't exactly reputable. I wasn't even aware that Supernature even had a history page. Or any normal information for that matter. Supernature was founded four years ago. Because? Because... Time for an educated guess. Because there was a lack of coverage on supernatural events. That's why I went white girl. It was first of its kind. Indeed, Indeed Miss Hart. There is one thing unique to humanity, the thirst for truth. For decades, nay, millennia, well, millennia, people have walked through their daily lives beneath a cloud of ignorance. They, blinded by tribal worries and limited worldviews, fail to accept any truth beyond the mantle of their own experience. 
And that, Miss Hart, is why Supernature has become great. We are not afraid to speak the truths that others are fearful to explore. We are not afraid to open our minds to the scrutiny of pure truth and reason. We are not afraid of any man, any malice, any marsupial. We? We what? Okay. Oh, you're so cute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Recognize this, Miss Hart. Own it like it is your soul. Yeah, sure, let's go. Yes, sir! Good. And now, on to business. You're likely aware of the fact that tabloid writers often have pressing deadlines. Yes? I hear that the regular pace is around 10 article stubs per day. Well, that isn't how Supernature operates, Miss Hart. Quality over quantity. Perfection over pre preceptance. Extraordinary over exp expedited. Yeah. Ah, oh, burp. The other staff will oversee the regular articles. You, Miss Hart, have a special assignment. You're my trap card, Miss Hart. My Joker. Joker? Not an ace? I thought that Jokers were usually bad. What do you have in mind? Have you retrieved your mail? Yes. There should be a manila envelope sent from Cypress Fortunes. Oh! The envelope that looks like spam? <laughs> Cypress Fortunes is a dump dummy company to protect our privacy. Pay the name no heed. Right. Look through the envelope's contents. Looking right now. Ah. Yearly Rigo. Independent singer and songwriter born July 14th. Is this someone who died and her ghost is haunting somewhere? <laughs> Keep reading. Ooh. Mar Marine? Mary? Marin, Marine, Marine Teller, independently wealthy entrepreneur, unknown birthday. Oh, he's cute. <laughs> Beckett Arm Armistice, Armistice, diner owner and manager. Oh my God, he's gorge. Halton Augustine, package delivery driver. He's cute too. Leaf Lewis, audio engineer and music store clerk. And last one. Zach Zachary Harvinfest, elementary school teacher. Oh, his school teacher. Well, you will notice that these are six living individuals who appear ordinary, ordinary with ordinary occupations. Nothing can be further from the truth. Are they possessed? No. no. Werewolves? No. Vampires? Miss Hart. What? I'm just asking questions. Sorry, just guessing. We have recently received a trustworthy anonymous tip that each of these people may be housing the spirits of the Zodiacs. Trustworthy anonymous tip? Is that an issue? No, sir. What are the spirits of the Zodiacs? Not much is known about them. Investigating details would be your job. So, an anonymous tip for an unknown lead that might not exist. It, yes, sir. You are to observe these six subjects in a detailed manner and write up anything that appears suspicious. Provide details on how a spirit of the zodiac works and how it affects a person's life. Yes, sir. Report to me whenever possible, though it is likely you will encounter dangerous situations where it is not. Do not worry, your contract with only will only terminate after a month of no contact. Dangerous situations, sir. Recall the interview questions. Expect moments like that. Being shot at, sir? And held hostage? Among other things, naturally. Did you not read the liability waiver that came with the contract? I did, but... Then, seeing as you sign it regardless, it appears there is no issue. Continue, sir. I understand that this particular job may be very difficult. There are, after all, no connections between the suspects. So, sir, just to clarify, our only lead is the anonymous tip? Indeed. Precisely. Okay, sir. I'll work something out. <laughs> that is what I like to hear. I shall contact you near the time of your first deadline. Farewell. Uh, okay. Seems interesting. Alright. Really, I should have been thankful. Most tabloids just spin stories off the top of their heads to get more viewership. No research, no reliable sources, no evidence. Just a convincing narrative that appeals to people's senses of morbid fascination. 
that the editors are feeling particularly high budget. They might even throw in a skillfully manipulated image or an interview with a bribed witness. Supernature was, in more than one way, totally unique. And one day, maybe I become a genuine Pathfinder myself. Sail? Where? Muds? Morsels? Patrician. DDVC? Eon? I just like reading signs. Okay, looks like this is it. Muds Morsels Diner. Owned and managed by Beckett's Armistice. Or armor size, who knows. Seems like a good target to start with. He has a public restaurant, so it shouldn't be hard to get a little info. Oh, is this a cutie I saw? Hello? The place was electric, but in a charming way. I thought it said electric, but it's not. The core of a simple diner had been re retrofitted with scattered traditional decor and elements like lanterns, brush paintings, and a broad panel of stained glass. It had character, history, Almost like climbing through your grandma's attic and piling all of your findings in one big bright collage. I surreptitiously sur snapped a few shots with my camera as I entered. Documentation was everything after all. Picks or it didn't happen could be a legitimate argument in the media industry. Hi. Well, hello. Welcome. Oh, sorry, my voice went so weird. Welcome. How many? Just one. Hmm. Right this way, please. Why are you humming at me like that? Like, it's totally normal for someone to eat alone. Can I get you anything to drink? Water's fine, thanks. Sure. I'll be right back. I need to have a look around this area. Sorry, waitress. Let's go to the bathroom, right? God, guys, I really love this art. Look, even the manager is back there. This. This was where I should have stepped away. This, right here, was the moment of no return. I hear a voice coming from the office. And so... Oh, his voice is beautiful. The withering bluster of the gale pounds against the ground. It shrieks, ghost-like, screams against his boots. Quiet as rain. Blue Dolly steps forward. His fingers are steady as he unsheaths his blade. Indeed. Shooting, sh shooting. Shuni is that how you say, pronounce? I don't know. Sings gently and catches the last scraps of moonlight against its edge. It appears just as hungry for justice as he. Is someone reading a play? I peered into the office at the end of the hall. Oh, he's gorgeous. He's reading a story? Oh no, is he married? Oh, we can't. We can't date him. <laughs> Beckett Armistice or Amor Armistice was sitting leisurely on the floor looking more like a babysitter than a restaurant manager. A bright eyed little boy draped cozily over his shoulder. Oh wait, those are his kids. They don't have the same eye color. I mean, same hair color though, so. A bright eyed little boy draped cozily over his shoulder and at his side a little girl was listening intently. Well. And that's the end of this chapter. Or the chapter. Time to go. Uh -huh. Oh, it's that uncle. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna lose it. I was like, no, our potential candidate. No, Uncle Beckett. Uncle, huh? Uncle. Uncle, you can't possibly stop there. Please, a few more pages. Pretty please? <laughs> oh, alright, but just a few more. Hmm. A flicker of motion catches Lou Dolly's per 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 periphery. He, I do not know these words. He halts at once. He knows this, this presence. He has sensed it before. So, you have come, whispers the shadow. <laughs> the traitor, the traitor! <sighs> yes, and at that very moment, the rhythmic, the, the rhythmic rush of the kneel, knell begins. Bong bong! Like the footsteps of an approaching demon, like a fugue sung by the moon. I have come, confirms Ludal. He, I don't know, yeah, Ludal, sorry. I kept saying Ludali, I don't know why. <laughs> he is a gentle, he is gentle and somber. He raises... Zootsy? I don't know. His heart aches deep in his chest. You would raise your hand against your own flesh and blood? Scoffs the figure. Ludal stills, but his hands do not tremble. You are not my brother, no longer. And then Zootsy came singing downward. And so. And smote him. Yes! Justice is served! Yay! <laughs> oh, Ludal wins again! <laughs> Uh, it appears that your father has arrived, Josie. Jeffrey? Go along, he's waiting outside. Aww. What? 
coming this way. I instinctively scrambled away from the door and dove into a pile of cardboard boxes by the kitchen. In hindsight, it was totally ridiculous trying to hide from someone like Beckett Armistice or Armistice. After all, if finders really were keepers, then Beckett would own everything in the world. Oh, she's cute. He's cute too. He's cuter though. As I crouched in my makeshift cover, Beckett waved off the children that he had been entertaining. But the moment they disappeared down the corner, he swiveled around eyes hard. He stormed right to where I was hiding, casually removed a single box that exposed my head and leaned over me. Hey. Hello. Hi. Do you make it a, a habit to simulate cardboard boxes? Not generally, no. Well? Then this is... Uh, an exception? Huh. Really? For what occasion? Um, this is quite possibly the worst way that this situation could have turned out. Happy National Box Day! Here, you get one too! They are my boxes. Yeah, yeah they are. Hmm. So, the question that then begs, what are you doing here? I was... looking for the bathroom? No way! I already look way too suspicious. How did this guy know where I was hiding? Faint? <laughs> we could be so extra and dramatic and just faint. That, that, I, I kind of like that option. Let's, let's do it. Faint. Uh, um, I don't feel so good. Uh... Oh dear, sir, is this woman unconscious? Perhaps. It appears that she fainted. Throw her in the cauldron with the others. Hmm. Yes, sir. Medium rare? Well... Medium rare always turns out a bit stringy, don't you think? Huh. Then I'll inform the chef to prepare it rare. What are you guys even talking about? Oh, the customer miraculously recovered. Uh... Can I still prep the cauldron, sir? No. It's fine. You're dismissed. I love their dark humor. It's funny. <laughs> Miss, you ought to see the look on your face. Ah, that was entertaining. Joking about cooking customers, you have a very strange sense of humor. Oh. I was only teasing, my apologies. He sounds completely insincere. However. Oh, his voice, Jesus. If you didn't want wish to hear, I would say wash. Wish to hear such nonsense, perhaps you should have made your own. Over dramatic, don't you think? A fainting display? Uh sir, if you do not know, I am very emotional. Okay? I'm I'm very dramatic. <laughs> And now he sounds intimidating? I. Sorry. Are you going to report me? Hmm. For now, I have no intention of reporting you. However, if you don't mind, I have just one more thing to verify. May I see your camera? Camera? Oh, um, of course. Huh? Is. Is there something wrong? Hey. These pictures are rather stunning. Sorry? Hmm. I originally presumed that you might be taking malicious photos, but it appears that you're simply taking references of decor inspiration. Are you a photographer? Me? Oh, yes, I am. Uh, a photographer. <laughs> My concentration was in visual communication, which involved a lot of photography and design. But in this situation, it seems better to claim that I'm a photographer rather than a journalist. Hmm. This seems like a coincidence of unusual proportions. But he deliberated for a moment like he was weighing a very important decision. Which, in fact, he was. Not that I knew it. Well, Well, what are your rates? I've been looking to relaunch our website with a new design, which includes several large picture headers. From what I've seen, your work is more than adequate. You mean, you're hiring me? Huh. This was a rather unusual process, even by my standards. I'll admit that much. But simply put, yes. I far prefer to work with someone who I've already met in person, rather than a complete stranger. Besides, you're... Uh... Never mind. Some things ought to be left unsaid. Uh, I... Sorry? I'm just surprised. Would you like the like time to think over the proposition? No, I mean, it's great. I, I'm thankful. It's very convenient to learn more about him as a target. How can I contact you? Here is my business card. I'll contact you tomorrow morning. I'll send over my portfolio, terms, the like. All right. Farewell. 
Now, if you don't mind, I have an order to deliver. Oh, um, yes, of course. Wait, right here. Wait, you're telling me to wait? Why? Megan slipped into the kitchen, his step light, his, his, his steps light and perfectly balanced. When he returned, a hefty bag of takeout was draped over one hand. Hey. Here! Ooh, that sounds like a lot of food. Oh! Oh? Uh. Please deliver this for me. Oh, okay! Deliver it? Yes. Frankly speaking, you owe me for trespassing. In a public restaurant? I'm gonna be sassy with this guy. Perhaps. Public, perhaps, but nonetheless owned property. And you were looking into my private office, where children were present. That's... I wasn't... It um, sounds really bad when you put it that way. <laughs> Precisely. Perhaps not grounds for a lawsuit, but let's avoid any unpleasantries. Where does this takeout need to go? Is it far? Mm -hmm. Is distance a problem? Well, I don't have a car unless you want to lend me one. Down payment, maintenance fees, driver's insurance, I can't afford it on top of an apartment. For now, I just use public transportation. And a bike. Hmm. I see. At this time, the customer is probably in Clementine Park, which is just down the street. Probably. And if he's not? <laughs> so our luck, I suppose he won't receive his takeout. <laughs> is that an ethical business practice? Well... It's fine, he'll understand. Okay. Well, anyway, this guys, we, we've played like quite, quite long enough, so we're gonna save right here. But this is gonna be it for today's episode. I cannot wait to play some more. The art is beautiful, you guys. I'm very obsessed with the art. The music is beautiful as well. But I, I just love all these colors. They're so freaking pretty. Oh, I hit the mic. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you guys. <laughs> but it's so freaking pretty, and I love it so, so, so much. As usual, I will leave the game download demo thingy down below in the description box so you guys can play this yourself. Have fun with it. Tell me um, who you guys would choose, because I'm uh, I'm assuming we can choose the, the people that we're going to be, um, quote, researching, unquote. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys for watching, stay beautiful, and I'll see you guys in the next one.